Hey guys, what's going on? It's your girl D here with 8th House Energy. Here to bring you um, the information about the full moon in Scorpio. You know, the full moon is tonight in Scorpio. Um, full moons talk about, uh, or, or full moons are best used as far as energy work to uh, remove anything that you don't want in your life. Uh, the 8th house is where, um, well, yeah, it's, it's Scorpio, which is where the full moon is. Scorpio deals with uh, rebirth. It deals with transformation, okay, from one state of being to another, whether it's an idea, person, place, thing. It's a transformation of energy. Um, unfortunately, with the eighth house, there's a lot of hidden, hidden emotions, hidden feelings, toxic energies. Um, the eighth house deals with criminal activity. It deals with... Uh, psychic abilities it deals with some of the scarier things in life that a lot of people don't like to talk about things that you don't sit at the the kitchen table and talk about so we really need to be aware of these energies for the next two weeks because they're going to be very strong um coupled with this uh pluto retrograde that we're going to actually officially be in effective tomorrow we're already in the pre-shadow stages of it we've been in the pre-shadow stages of the pluto retrograde since the 13th right and um, now we're going to go into the full-blown energies of it, uh, effective tomorrow, coupled with this full moon in Scorpio uh, that is going to be very potent. These energies for the next two weeks are going to be very potent. They could be very toxic, okay, because we're dealing with people's hidden emotions, hidden agendas, hidden feelings, okay, things that you may not know about. So you're going to have to be careful moving about. So um, I made some notes here. I'm just going to read off my notes. And um, I might channel a bit as well if I if anything comes to me that I need to let you know. So we're going to start with Aries. Okay, so I'm going to go through all 12 signs. So Aries, the full moon in Scorpio is in your 8th house. Okay, um, so with it being in your 8th house, you know, the 8th house is the house of, uh, it's the house of secrecy. It's the house of the occult. It's the house of criminal activity, criminal behavior. Um, it's the house of other people's money, other people's finances. It's the house of uh, taxes, inheritance. Um, it's the house of... Um, also, <laughs> forgive me, but at any rate, so the full moon's in that house, okay? So the full moon in Scorpio, um, that deals with hidden emotions, toxic emotions, things that people have in ulterior motives, so when we have that full moon in Scorpio opposing Uranus, Mercury, and Venus, those three uh, planets are in your second house. So when we're dealing with the full moon in Scorpio oppose Uranus, Uranus is all about the element of surprise. It's all about rebellion. It's all about uniqueness and being individuals. Your second house deals with how you feel about yourself, your morals, your values, your self-worth, how you feel about other things, how you allow people to treat you based on how you feel about yourself and how much money you make. So for a lot of you, um, this is going to be in your uh, second house. This talks about how you make, how much money you make. So some of you could be going through some, you could have some hidden feelings, hidden emotions in reference to how much money you make, um, how you feel about yourself, how people treat you based on how they... You know, people may get a, people, we teach people how to treat us, right? So if somebody sees that you don't treat yourself well, then these people will come around and they'll treat you that way. The only way they'll stop that is if you check them. So for, I feel like for a lot of you, you're going through that because you have the full moon in Scorpio squaring Saturn. And Saturn's in your 11th house and that deals with like-minded individuals, your friends, things like that. So your hidden feelings and emotions or their toxic hidden feelings and emotions, um, may be restricting you from connecting with people okay um with you know people you may have thought were friends or so-called friends or actual friends you may have some um underlying hidden feelings or emotions about them or they may have some underlying hidden feelings and emotions about you so you do need to be careful in reference to the people around you your friends you and pisces need to be careful the fake friends around you okay um, the full moon um, in Scorpio trines Mars. So the good thing about these energies is that when it trines Mars, Mars gives you this energy will give you the courage. It'll give you the emotional strength um, to deal with things that happen for you. It's in your fourth house. So you're dealing with, you know, how you feel about yourself and your private life, 
what went on maybe when you were growing up as a child, you know, some things that went on in your family. So maybe some of you are, um, are, uh, able to, uh, deal with that. You're able to communicate about that. You're able to speak about that when at other times, maybe you weren't, uh, maybe your hidden feelings and emotions about that situation are coming about, or maybe people around you or other family members may have some hidden feelings or emotions about something that went on in the family. Okay, that may um, give you the energy to talk about it. Um, in reference to your friends with Saturn, yeah, you may be, uh, you, you should be careful with the people that you associate with. I feel like you got to be careful. You have some fake friends. Be very careful. Okay, um, people with alternative motives, hidden agendas, and it may even be revealed to you. But um, just keep an eye out for suspect activity. Just follow your intuition, Aries, and you should be okay. Now, with the full moon squaring um, Uranus, um, this is all about unexpected sudden events. Okay, now um, Mercury is also squaring Saturn, so it might be difficult for you to communicate how you feel. Because of negative thinking, maybe because of being criticized, or it could be because of arguments or misunderstandings. Um, as far as if you're doing important work, you want to pay attention to details. You may want to um, seek uh, professional advice if you're dealing with contracts or anything that has to do with legal matters. Um, especially if you're going to be buying um, real estate or signing for apartments or leases for Aries, you definitely want to do that. You want to make sure you double check the contracts. Uh, in business and legal matters. I wouldn't rely on the word of others right now, okay, especially during this transit for the next two weeks. So that's for you, Aries. We also have Venus squaring Saturn, um, and that adds tension to your love life. So you, it may make it harder for you to express your feelings. It be, it, I don't know if it's about you being shy. I just feel like you might just be feeling like you may be on some loner vibes right now. OK, so you may be feeling that way, you know, your hidden feelings and emotions. You may just want to, you know, chill and be dolo for a little bit. And it's OK, you know, but as long as you express that to people who care about you or people who, you know, are around you or have to deal with you, just let them know, you know, you're you're in your weird feelings, you know, with the transits and things like that. So you may not be so social. All right. Um, but that's what I got for you, Aries. So let's move on to Taurus. So Taurus, the full moon is in the seventh house. Your full moon in Scorpio is in the seventh house. You're going to feel this the hardest in Scorpio because Scorpio is your opposite polarity. So uh, with the full moon in Scorpio in your seventh house, that's the house of partnerships, all types of partnerships. Every type of relationship you have falls in the seventh house, right? So with the full moon in Scorpio opposing Uranus, Mercury, and Venus, all of them are in your first house. So with the full moon... Um, the full moon opposing Uranus. You got to be careful of unexpected events, sudden changes, mood swings, and impulsive reactions from you or from people who you deal with. You know, this stuff can lead you to be um, anxious. It can lead them to be anxious. Either one of you could be nervous or agitated, um, or you may have some people who might emotionally detach. This is a time where people have to be careful because they could break up in relationships. So be careful if you're breaking up with people. Um, for all of you, you know, you just want to be careful what you say, because may it, what may happen is after this uh, transit ends two weeks from now, you might be feeling like, oh, why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. You know, maybe some of you have some hidden feelings that are bottled up that you didn't say. Now is a time to try to express it in a nice way, because it could come out in a very nasty way, depending on unexpected events that could happen based on Uranus. OK, being in your first house, Taurus. Taurus, you guys are going through changes anyway with Uranus being there, Mercury and Venus. You're reevaluating the relationships in your life, who you uh, want to be around, who you are as an individual, what you deserve and what you don't deserve, what you want and what you don't want. Um, so this is going to be a trying time for you these next two weeks uh, with the full moon squaring Saturn. Um, this can have like restricting... Um, and depressing influences on your feelings and your relationships. It might be harder for you to um, emotionally connect with each other, with other people. You may be feeling a, li a little bit lonely or guilty um, if you've done something to contribute to relationships not working. All right. So, you know, because, um, you know, the full moon in Scorpio is in your seventh house, you're going to be looking at your relationships and you're going to be looking at the part you played versus the part other people played. And you're going to be dealing with the hidden feelings and emotions behind that. Um, 
So you'll be dealing with that with Saturn because Saturn's in your 10th house. So that'll be about your reputation, like how people who've dealt with you see you. Also, this has to do with how you, uh, what you're known for as far as making money. Okay. This also has to deal with your morals and values, your internal compass, you know, what you will do versus what you won't do, what you will tolerate versus what you won't tolerate. Some of you, some of the behavior that you've been exhibiting on the low is coming to the surface. People are seeing that or what's going on Taurus is you're seeing um, people's malicious intent and the things that they've been doing behind your back. You're going to start seeing that as well. And you may see that in the workplace. Um, you do want to be careful with expressing your feelings and your frustration, specifically your frustrations and aggravations in the workplace. Some of you may be feeling like, okay, um, things like, okay, professional achievement and development. You may be feeling like, damn, you know, maybe I should have went back to school or maybe I could take that certification or maybe I could take this test. Uh, I feel like some of you are feeling um, maybe if you apply for these types of things, you may get restricted or pushed back from it. It's only while these transits are going on in the next two weeks. Don't worry about it. So apply for another job if you want to. Uh, go ahead and register back for school if you want to. Maybe some of you are feeling like you don't care and you don't want to, but that information that that energy may subside in two weeks also for you guys with Taurus you got um full moon in Scorpio trining Mars so um that is going to bring you the courage the emotional strength and the initiative to uh straighten out things in your environment maybe your living situation so some of you are going to get that up and go attitude about wanting to move some of you may want to relocate some of you um you may want to get out of the house you know, you may not want to sit up in the house. You may want to just get out and lift your spirits up, something like that. So um, some of you may want to go over to friend's house or family member's house, but you got to be careful with your emotions. You know, don't be over there huffing and puffing at people <laughs> because you're upset or frustrated or just let them know, look, I'm, I'm upset. I'm going through a mood right now. You know, I just want to be around whomever. So that could affect you in those ways, Taurus. So just be careful with that. Um... Yeah, so your workplace, your um, environment, and just what you're going through um, personality-wise, you guys are going through an ascension process. So you're in the process of eliminating people, places, and, th and things in your life that don't serve you. You may not be expressing that, but some of these people that you may be getting out of your life, they may be expressing their feelings towards you about your changes. So just be careful with toxic energy, arguments, and frustration. Also, you know, if you have somebody and you're in a relationship, now's a good time for you guys to just channel that energy into some, you know, good sex. All right? Because with Mars, you know, you got passion and you got sex appeal. And with the full moon in Scorpio, you know Scorpio is, um the you know, rules the reproductive organs. So have some fun. Have some safe fun. You know, if you're frustrated, if you have a partner... You know, you two could get together and maybe take that frustration out on each other. All right. But Gemini, Gemini, we got the full moon in Scorpio in your sixth house, the sixth house. Um, that deals with your work ethic. That deals with how you get along with your colleagues, your co-workers, your, your employees, your employers, um, how they see you. Also deals with your um, your your intestinal fortitude, your your um, discipline your work ethic. It also has to deal with open enemies. Now we're dealing with the full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio deals with hidden emotions, hidden feelings. It deals with criminal activity. All right. So Gemini, you need to be careful. Okay. Um, you need to be careful at work. Okay. For some of you, uh, because this is the sixth house. So there could be people who feel a certain way about you at work, or you have to be careful expressing how you feel. You guys like to talk. Gemini's talk. They talk whether they good. They talk whether they bad. <laughs> you know, but they like to talk. That's they rule communication. So be careful what you're saying and who you're saying it to at work. Be very careful. People could be going back, taking your business back as far as what you're saying about your boss or your colleagues to other people. And you may not even know it. And it could blow up in your face. Be careful for the next two weeks what you say at work. You got the full moon opposing Uranus, um, Mercury, and Venus, that's in your 12th house. The 12th house is where cycles come to complete, okay? Where cycles come to die, where things come to change and transition and transform. You know, energy never dies, it just transforms. So I feel like with this um, energy here, with the full moon in um, Scorpio opposing Uranus, um, you just have to be careful of unexpected events, sudden changes, people having mood swings. It could be because somebody may have told somebody what you said. So you do need to be careful. 
Okay, um, some of you may be having difficulty uh, letting cycles close. Maybe you've disconnected from friends um, or friends have disconnected from you. So either they're having a problem letting the cycle close out and letting it end or you're having a problem letting the cycle close out and let it end. But either way, be careful because if you're having a problem with the cycle closing out, you don't want to be toxic to that person. You don't want to be stressing them and harassing them when they're done and vice versa. You don't want that done to you. So just be careful the people who are coming around you that you've uh, disconnected from. OK, especially if you're trying to end things with these people, don't start chatting with them again. You know, starting a, a conversation up with them. Let them know what's going on. You have to be definite in this um in this energy okay because there's going to be a lot of people sneaking in this energy this is sneaky energy okay ulterior motives now with the full moon and scorpio squaring saturn saturn is in your ninth house so the ninth house deals with uh the higher mind the intuition uh basically taking the things that you've learned and the pain that you went through and turning it into wisdom some of you are having difficulty doing that because some of the uh, cycles that you're supposed to close out with Uranus being in your 12th house, these people may not want to let you go or you may not want to let them go, one or the other. So you're having problems closing out cycles as a result, turning what you've learned in those cycles, the pain, into wisdom. So for the next two weeks, that might be a little trying for you. It might be very frustrating. But you have the full moon trining Mars in your second house. So with that, that gives you courage, it gives you the initiative, it gives you emotional strength, especially in your second house, you'll need that because that deals with your self-esteem, your self-value, and your self-respect. So that's going to tell you to put the foot down on these people who are trying to come back around that you've ended things with. They could be trying to come back around, sweet talk you, oh, I'm sorry, I want to be with you, things like that. But the reality of the situation is, is they don't want to let you go for whatever their ulterior motives are. And a lot of people are coming back around to get over on people during these two-week periods. So if you're definitely cutting someone off, don't take them back, especially during this two-week period. Don't do it. Uh, tap into that Mars energy that's in your second house that deals with your self-esteem, self-respect, self-value, and let them know it's a wrap. Okay? Cancer, we got the full moon in Scorpio in your fifth house. So the fifth house... That deals with anything that you like to do for fun, okay? It also deals with the speculative speculative markets, um, like gambling, lotto, casino, all that. So play the lotto, play the number, Cancer, all right? Um, the fifth house. So what we're dealing here with, with your fifth house is also um, love affairs, okay? So we're, you know, we got that Mars um, energy here um, in your first house. So some of you may be feeling really, in, you know, wanting to be intimate. OK, so be careful with who you're being intimate with, because, you know, we're dealing with this full moon and Scorpio energy. Scorpio rules the uh, reproductive organs. you got a lot of people out here who spreading things around sexually transmitted diseases. So you guys got to be careful who you're dealing with. Wrap up, strap up, dental dam, whatever you use. Don't sit here and talk shit to me in the comments about, oh, my God, you're talking about those things because people have sex. OK, this is eighth house energy in case you didn't check the channel. People have sex. So protect yourself. If you're going to be out here, you know, being intimate, um, use condoms or whatever, um, you know, protection you use for pregnancy. But also use condoms or whatever you use for STDs. Dental dam. There are people out here having oral sex. Use dental dam. Okay. That will help to protect you as well. You can still do what you want to do. Let's keep it 100. Okay. I want people to be safe. This is why I'm doing this. So with Gemini... With the um, you have it, you have the full moon in Scorpio in your fifth house. You have the full moon in Scorpio opposing Uranus, Mercury, and Venus, those are in your 11th house. Now, your 11th house deals with like minded people, so this is your social life, your friends, aka your, a, your friends. Um, it will also relate to you if you worked in an environment where you worked for um, a group of a group or an organization that dealt with humanitarian efforts. Okay, so with the full moon in Scorpio opposing. Uranus, you know, unexpected things could happen in reference to your friends. Your friends may have sudden changes, mood swings, you know, and they may have impulsive reactions or you may be that way to them. OK, um, so people you could be noticing that people could be uh, becoming distant towards you or maybe you're feeling distant towards some of your friends. OK, um, because of maybe some hidden feelings that they have towards you or hidden feelings you have towards them. The full moon squaring Saturn is in your eighth house. Okay, so we know what the eighth house is all about, right? So you could have um, 
this could be making you it, harder for you to emotionally connect to others. So you might be kind of distant from people. OK, as far as not being able to connect with them, you could be feeling this way because there could be sadness, there could be loneliness, there could be some guilt and shame um, in reference to, you know, if you um, were a participating factor, a, a major participating factor in failed relationships, you may be feeling some way about that right now. Or if someone who was dealing with you was a major factor in your relationship not working, they could be having some hidden feelings about it in reference to you that they may not have expressed to you but they may try to for some of you um so just be aware of that and then we have the full moon um in scorpio trining mars now mars is in your first house so that is all about this is the good part of the um of this of these transits because this is going to bring you courage it's going to help you to get your emotional strength and it's also going to bring you passion and sex appeal so you may be looking very attractive to people you may have people wanting to talk to you you know if you go out people may be complimenting you you know things like that um so you know that's what i got for you cancer now for leo we got the fourth house where scorpio the full moon in scorpio is going to be the fourth house deals with your um your ancestors it deals with your roots your heredity okay it deals with your bloodline it deals with the nur the nurturing um energy uh when you were uh, a child during your formative years it also deals with um the seat within your soul you know your your soul which is your home and your private feelings and emotions okay and it deals with the home that you live in now as an adult so that's where the full moon is for you guys, okay? So you may be, um, there may be some hidden feelings and emotions from family members that you may not have known about. You may not know certain family members feel a certain way, or you may feel a certain way about friends, I mean family members, okay? And that energy may come out in a toxic way with this Scorpio energy, so be careful communicating with friends and, fa I mean, with family right now, okay? The full moon in Scorpio opposes Uranus for you in your 10th house, so your 10th house is all about your career aspirations, your professional achievements, um, you know, career endeavors. So with that being in the 10th house, you may have some hidden uh, feelings or emotions in reference to your career, in reference to what you do to make a living. Um, maybe you don't like um, what you do. Maybe you want to be a doctor and opposed to um, a dentist. Um, and so maybe you have some unresolved issues about that. Maybe um, the people that you work with um, may have some un, some hidden toxic feelings that you may not know about. OK, um, this also has to do with your reputation and how people see you. So people may be seeing you in a way that you don't know. You know, you may be putting out a persona that you're one way, but people may be able to see what's really going on behind the scenes if there's a front there. Or you may be feeling that way about people that you work with, okay, or your colleagues, or people in your industry, okay? For the full moon squares Saturn in your seventh house for you. So the seventh house deals with all types of partnerships. So you may be feeling um, that it's difficult for you to connect emotionally with others. You could be feeling like if you contributed to the downfall of these relationships, you could be feeling sadness, uh, shame, or guilt about it. Um, if the people that you were dealing with were the downfall of the relationship, they could be feeling that way about your connection. These could be the hidden feelings that they have, okay? Um, but with the full moon trining Mars, that's one of the positive transits in this uh, two-week period. That's in your 12th house. The 12th house is where everything comes to full cycle, full term. So um, you're going to be able to bring things to conclusion. You're going to have the courage to do so. You're going to have the emotional strength and the passion to, um, you know, if there's any relationships that you're having issues with, you're going to have the initiative to bring it to a close. But don't use the toxic energy to do it. You know, do it in a way where um, you're being direct, but you're not being bossy or rude. It's very important that you give off that energy, Leo. All right. So that's Leo. So Virgo, Virgo, what's going on with you? So we have the uh, full moon and Scorpio in your third house, Virgo. So the third house... The third house deals with connecting to your environment, your immediate environment. It also deals with your communication. So there could be some hidden emotions and hidden feelings um, that you might have about your environment, where you live. Maybe you secretly are thinking about moving or relocating. Um, maybe um, you... Um, 
Hmm. The communication. Maybe there's a lack of communication in, in, in a scenario or situation where you should communicate. Or maybe there are people around you who have hidden feelings or emotions. Like it could be your neighbors. It could be something going on with your neighbors. Maybe your neighbors feel a certain way about you and you may find that out. Okay? Or you may already know that and things might escalate. Be careful. Um, you know, you may have... Um, inner, you've got to be careful in your local environment. Like doing things like going to the store out in traffic like be careful you know with people and arguing with people because you could run into some toxic energy just running your your errands around the neighborhood things like that going to the grocery store going to the gas station going to the gym going to pick up the kids just be careful with people you know especially in traffic you know no road rage because that could lead to something you know we're dealing with the eighth house here and you know eighth house deals with death and rebirth of all sorts so you don't want to get in a situation where you're dealing with someone who's off the chain and you argue with them again in road rage and the next thing you know it's on the six o'clock news for whatever reason so be careful okay um we have the full moon opposing uranus and that's in your ninth house so you know that deals with the ninth house deals with your higher mind, your um, wisdom, turning, you know, the lessons that you've learned into wisdom. All right. So for some of you um, that you might be a little frustrated with that because of the sudden change, there could be some sudden changes and it's like you have to wrap it up. You have to accept the fact that it's over and that you have to move on. It might be painful, you know, like it could be an automatic argument out of the blue. All right. And all of a sudden now you and this person are no longer. You know, maybe things were leading up to that, but, you know, if it hits the head, if it, you know, hits the fan, it could happen so quick. And then it's like, okay, well, what happened? And it may take you a moment to process what happened. So be careful not to blow up on people, you know, because this two week period, especially people you love, because what could happen is in the two weeks, you're like, damn, why did I say that? Or damn, did I really spaz out like that? So be careful. Okay. Um, we have the full moon in Scorpio squaring Saturn in your sixth house. So, you know, the sixth house is all about work, um, your work ethic, your intestinal fortitude is all about your health as well. So um, some of you in reference to your, OK, your pets, too. So watch your pets, too. Something might be going on with your pets. They might be acting weird because of the energies. Um, you know, they, be, they may want to be intimate, you know. So if you got cats that are not cats and dolls that are not spaded and neutered, you're going to notice you're going to notice um <laughs> for sure because they're gonna be acting up um if you've ever dealt with that you know how much fun that can be to hear your cat whining trust me fun times all right so yeah pay attention to your pets uh but with the uh, full moon um square and saturn um it might be difficult for you to connect with people at your job it might be difficult for you to be um, to stay on track like you may try to stay on a diet or not eat certain things. It might be difficult for you to, to do that. Don't beat yourself up. OK, it's just a two week period that we're going through where the energies are really tense. Um, you are you could be in a battle. And I was just saying that to um, uh, one of the uh, people who made a comment on my Virgo video. But Virgo, you could be going through a situation here where, you know, you're battling your, your good side is battling your negative side it's like your good side is like okay we'll do this but because of this transit you know you could be feeling agitated you could be feeling nervous you could be feeling emotional detachment um some of you could be um feeling you know turmoil you know um but the good thing about this energy is with the full moon trining Mars, that particular transit, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to develop the emotional strength that you need to make the decisions that are best for you um, so that you're not super analyzing things and getting to the point where you don't make a move because that could happen with the full moon and Scorpio squaring Saturn or opposing Uranus. You may just get like stuck and not move, you know, or you may come up with all kinds of analysis as to why. You can't move forward or why you can't do something when in reality you just have to deal with the emotions and feelings behind it. Your hidden feelings and hidden emotions. Sometimes we subconsciously don't know that there are hidden feelings and hidden emotions around why we feel a certain way or why we look at something a certain way. So you just want to get in touch with your feelings and your um some of you like i said you want to be careful if you have any restrictions or diets or anything the next two weeks it might be difficult for you to keep that up okay but make sure you take your medication if you're doing that some of you might get a little last of days ago about that or you may feel a certain way because you don't want to take the medication but you know just make sure you do that okay for your safety so um 
Yeah, so Mars, um, so full moon in Scorpio trines Mars in your 11th house. That has to do with your friends, your like-minded associates, people that you uh, connect with because you guys uh, relate in some way, shape, or form. So some of you might be, um, you may want to connect with some friends to release some steam. I get that Virgo energy right now is very tense, very stressed. Um, because there could be a lot going on with you guys in your work area, as well as you just processing some of the things that have gone on with some of the karmic partnerships that you may still be in that you need to come out of. And some of you just need to have some fun. So go out if you can, have some fun with your friends. You know, I know COVID is here, but do what you can. Try to have some fun. Try to relieve some tension, some stress. You know, maybe be intimate if you have a partner and you're in a relationship. This is a good two weeks for that intimacy to kick in. And for you to use that energy. All right, Libra. The full moon of Scorpio is in your second house. The second house deals with your self-esteem, your self-value, your self-worth. You know, how you feel about yourself and how you um, let people treat you based on how you feel about yourself. All right. So we got the full moon there. So you may have some hidden feelings about how people treat you that you may not have expressed. Or because you're standing up for yourself now, the people around you who were treating you terribly, they may have some hidden feelings and emotions about you standing up for yourself. So... This might be a little tricky energy for you. Um, the full moon in Scorpio opposes Uranus in your eighth house. All right. I believe it's your eighth house. It should be your seventh. Hold on. Uranus. We're, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's your eighth house. I just had to count and make sure. So, yeah, the full moon um, opposes Uranus in your eighth house. Now, not only Uranus is there, but Mercury and Venus is there as well. So when we're talking about um, the full moon opposing Uranus, we're talking about like unexpected events happening, you know, privately. OK, um, so you got to be careful of people's hidden agendas and hidden uh, feelings. OK, this could be in reference to relationships, love relationships. Okay, because this is in the eighth house. This also has to do with other people's money. So if you have anything going on with inheritances or taxes, there could be some um, hidden toxic shit going on in reference to that. It could be anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're going to be careful with the people that you're dealing with in, in reference to because you're going through a change as well. All right. And it may be slow for you to change. Like, for example, you may be cut people off. Right. But you may still be talking to these people here and there. But you really know that you're, you're done with them. But you still talk to them to save face because they're calling you. You or you may be nervous or scared of these people. You may not know what to expect from them. So you, you're communicating with them just to keep tabs on them. That could be something going on with you guys. But with the full moon squaring Saturn here, that's in your fifth house. That's the house of doing things to have fun. So it might be kind of difficult for you to have fun right now. There might be restrictions on the fun that you can have because you may be feeling a bit lonely. Some of you feeling depressed. Some of you may be feeling bad about relationships that, yes, like I was saying, some of you feeling bad about relationships. What you may want to do is go out and have a little fun, Libra, if you can. Um, if you don't have any friends or anybody that you can really trust because you got to be careful with these people coming back to you with ulterior motives. Remember the full moon in Scorpio. It's toxic energy, people with hidden feelings, hidden emotions. So people that you may have had fun with or did things with, or especially lovers, because the fifth house um, covers lovemaking and it covers your fetishes. So if some of you were dealing with situationships um, where you connected with people because of the strong sexual chemistry or connection you had, it could fall under this energy as well, especially with the full moon in Scorpio and Saturn in the fifth house. So you do want to put restrictions on... You know, those people that you're dealing with from the past, especially if you're having sex with them, they may not. Um, <laughs> you're basically Libra dealing with people who have a problem with you putting restrictions on things you never put restrictions on before. Like you're switching up on these people and they can't handle it. And they're trying to figure out what the hell. And some of them may be trying to come back to you to, uh, to trick you and to try to outsmart you to get you back under their their grasp. Um, but I feel like they're going to find that that's an issue. So you got to be careful as well. Um, especially with, cause you got the, you, what you're doing is you're changing the way that they're looking at you, whether you're realizing it or trying to or not, 
they don't want to change the way that they look at you. They want to look at you the way that they've been looking at you, which is how they've been getting over on you. But you're changing that by, you know, dis disconnecting from them, not communicating with them, not being intimate with them. And that's what you should be doing. So with that full moon um, and Scorpio trining Mars energy, that's going to give you the courage and the emotional strength to continue on with that. To let them know, look, I'm not going to be, you know, somebody that you just come and do what you want and bounce and lie to me and manipulate me and play games like you're not doing that anymore and so people are starting to see that so you're going to have people coming back to you who are going to be frustrated because you're standing your ground because these are like me libra uh, of all the signs that i've been doing you guys have been dealing with um people who are closest to a full-blown narcissist that i've ever seen like a lot of you are dealing with someone who has very strong narcissist tendencies i want to say this political uh, you know politically correct i guess because not everybody is narcissist because everybody's been throwing that word around in the tarot community like it's you know like like everybody has two eyes so everybody's narcissist no everybody's not narcissist we naturally as human beings can be narcissists but a full-blown narcissist is somebody who has a mental disorder this is like a personality disorder okay um some of us are just spiritually weak and we've been allowing people to do what they want to us and then we get frustrated and we call them narcissists because we let them do what they want for 10 years and now all of a sudden we're putting their foot down well of course they're going to look at you like oh you're not serious and they're going to still try to push their will on you because you've let it go for so long that's a difference. That's you being spiritually weak. A narcissist is just going to do this to anybody. They're going to use you, discard you, use you, discard you, period, right? So Libra's been dealing with something like that, okay? So what's going on is you're um, the people who've known you to be in these relationships, they're seeing that you're no longer in these relationships. So that full moon in Scorpio trying Mars is putting you in an energy, especially in your 10th house, where people are starting to see, okay, Libra's not letting this person do them dirty like this anymore. Libra's no longer messing with this person. Oh, wow. Okay. They really stopped messing with them this time. That type of energy. But yeah, please be careful the people coming around. Scorpio, you're going to feel this uh, heavy too. You and Taurus are going to feel this the heaviest because Taurus is your opposite energy. So Tor uh, Scorpio, of course, the, the uh, full moon and Scorpio's in your first house. So that's um your emotions and your feelings in reference to your personality now the full moon in scorpio opposing uranus uranus is in your seventh house along with mercury and venus so this is looking at all of your relationships whether family whether best friends whether intimate lovers whether business partners with the full moon opposing uranus in any of these areas you can expect um unexpected events sudden changes in these relationships people in these relationships having mood swings with you or impulsive reactions from these people or you could be um responding to them in this way okay um so this is all of your relationships so you got to be careful for the next two weeks really because um uranus is here and uranus again unexpected events sudden changes mood swings impulsive reactions either from you or from people that you're dealing with all right so uh the full moon in scorpio is squaring saturn as well and saturn's in your fourth house now your fourth house deals with your personal home your private emotions and feelings it deals with your roots your heritage where you grew up or how you grew up your bloodline the nurturing figure in your formative years as well as what goes on in the privacy of your home now as an adult so with uh, full moon in scorpio they're squaring saturn um in that area of your life you um, could be, some of you could be feeling a bit sad. Some of you could be feeling, um, being reminded of past relationships that didn't work out um, as far as family relationships because we're dealing with the fourth house here. So some of you may be, you know, looking at that and like, damn, you know, I wish things could have worked out with cousin Bertha or, you know, Uncle Eddie and I fell out and we're not talking no more, that type of thing. So things might be slow to heal if they even heal at all. But you also have to be careful with these people coming back around with ulterior motives, especially if they're family members that you know, you already know what time it is with them, and they could be coming back around. You need to be careful of them because I feel like with this toxic <clears throat> scorpionic energy, when people are coming back around that you've cut off, you need to be careful of these people, okay, coming back around because a lot of times they have ulterior motives. They're going to lie to you to get back in where they need to get in. Now we have the... um. Yeah, so that's in your fourth house. So you um, need to be careful with that. You've learned some lessons there. Um, be careful with people coming back around who um, have ulterior motives. The full moon Scorpio trines Mars in your ninth house. 
So that is going to give you the initiative to end up closing out these cycles. It's just like, you know what? It's done. It's a wrap. Turn in the pain that you experienced in these in these cycles, especially dealing with family members, the pain of dealing with family members or ex um, lovers who turned their back on you and things didn't work out. You're now at a point where you're able to take the pain from that and you can turn it into wisdom with Mars, um, with the full moon in Scorpio trining Mars. Sagittarius, all right, the full moon in Scorpio is in your 12th house, all right, the 12th house is where cycles come to end, okay, things come to completion, so there's some hidden feelings and emotions that people may have in reference to you ending things, or there's some feelings and emotions that you have in reference to people ending things with you, all right, the full moon is uh, Scorpio opposing Uranus, which is in your 6th house, that deals with work, okay, so there could be some issues, some unexpected issues going on at work, OK, with your colleagues, your employees, your co-workers, there could be, you know, mood swings, all that type of stuff going on for the next two weeks. So just be careful. Just know that it's a transit going on if people are feeling some sort of way or you notice that people are being sneaky at the job or suspicious acting, you know, or people may look at you that way, too. OK, it's going to be for the next two weeks. Now, when the full moon in Scorpio squares Saturn, it squares it in your third house. So your third house deals with your environment. It also deals with your communication. So you may have an issue um, connecting emotionally to others right now due to some of the things that you may experience. A lot of the, the Sagittarius I've been reading uh, for over the last couple of months have been going through separations and divorces and things like that. So you may be feeling some um, feelings about that, having hidden feelings about that. Could be sadness, loneliness, guilt, shame, you know, about past relationship failures. Um, but don't beat yourself up about this, please. This is a transit. It's just making you feel this way because of this transit. Of course, if a relationship has failed and you have unresolved issues, understood. But it might be a little more heavier for you right now because of this transit. So be careful of beating yourself up too much about this, okay? Be careful of that. Use this um, full moon and Scorpio trine Mars energy, which is in your eighth house, about your hidden feelings and your emotions. Um, use that energy to um, bring you courage, in this situation if you're feeling that way to give you the emotional strength to uh get past this okay very important for you because a lot of you are going through it right now as far as the separation that you were in with um your partners cap city the full moon's in your 11th house okay Yeah, it's your 11th house. I'm, I'm sorry, I had to make sure I wrote that down right. So the full moon of Scorpio is in your 11th house. The 11th house deals with uh, your like-minded individuals, your friends, your social life, okay? So you got to be careful with your friends. You got fake people around you, okay? You got fake people around you. Pisces has some fake people around them too. Um, I forget who else it was that I mentioned, but you got to be careful. Fake, fake friends. Full moon in Scorpio opposes Uranus is in your fifth house. This is about how you have fun. This is about children. Okay. Um, so there may be some unexpected things that happen with your kids. So be careful. Watch your kids. Watch what's going on with them. Um, they may have mood swings. They may feel, you know, they may have some impulsive reactions. There may be some unexpected events that happen with them. They could be a little nervous or agitated, especially if you got young babies. You know, just know if they're a little edgy this past two weeks, it's because this coming two weeks is because of the, the transit. So your kids might just be a little off. You know, everybody's off with this full moon energy okay so just keep that in mind um some of you i don't know you may want to be you may be more sexually active this let these next two weeks or some of you may not be as you know you may not want to be as intimate it just depends on how it's affecting you uh the full moon square saturn in your second house so the second house deals with your self-value your self-worth and your money making potential so some of you may be feeling um restricted in that area okay um as far as how much money you make, some of you, um, you could be feeling bad about your connections and your relationships that did not work out. Don't you beat yourself up at all in reference to that. Some of you may be feeling a little bit more lonelier than normal uh, because of the fact that, you know, you may have had some failed relationships. But be careful. Don't let that stress you out. It's, you know, if you're feeling a little low more than normal, just know it's this transit. Okay, it lasts two weeks. Um, we should be clear this energy around May 11th. OK, which is the full moon and I'm sorry, the new moon in Taurus. 
And then we have the full moon trining um, Mars in your seventh house, Capricorn. Your seventh house has to deal with all of your relationships. So you're going to have the courage to stand up to people who you feel are sneaky or have underhanded motives because you're dealing with underhanded people. People who are coming around acting like they're good with you when they're not. Um, a lot of them have to do with it, their, your social life, your friends. These could pe be people who consider you consider like-minded people, but you find out that they're not. So be careful, Capricorn, around the people that you are around, okay? Because they're fake. A lot of them are fake. If you cut them off, don't take them back, all right? So Aquarius, we have the full moon in the 10th house for you, okay? The 10th house. The full moon in Scorpio is in your 10th house, and that's your house of your friends. Is that the right for you? Yeah, that's your 10th house. Oh, I'm sorry. So your 10th house is your career um, aspirations, okay? Uh, professional achievements, okay? So you could have some hidden feelings and emotions about that. Maybe you felt you should have went for that PhD instead of stopping at your master's. Maybe you feel like you should have uh, gone for that promotion instead of, you know, um, waiting another year or what have you. There could be something going on that you may have feelings about in reference to your professional achievements in your professional endeavors. You could have people around you who may feel a certain way about what you do also, okay? So for example, you could be somebody who practices, uh, you make money in the occult industry, okay? So for example, you could be a tarot card reader. You could have people around you who may um, not like what you do, or you may have people who work in the industry with you who um, may pay attention to more than what you have hidden feelings and emotions about what you do, whether they like you on the low and don't let anybody know or whether they hate you on the low and don't let anybody know. Um, but you could be dealing with that. Uh, the full moon opposes Uranus in your fourth house. So the fourth house deals with your private home within yourself, your spirit, within your body. It, it deals with your... Um, it deals with your uh, where you grew up, your bloodline, uh, your roots, your heritage. It deals with the nurturing energy in your formative years. It deals with your private life now as an adult and what goes on in your privacy of your own home. So with, um, you know, full moon and Scorpio opposing Uranus, Venus, and Mercury in your fourth house, um, you could be looking at energies of, like I said, with Uranus is sudden, unexpected events in your home life, okay? Um with your family, it could be um, sudden changes, people, uh, impulsive reactions and these inactions and these um, unexpected events could make people very nervous. It could make people very anxious. Um, people could uh, detach. You know, there could be fights and arguments. Um, so you got to be careful with that. OK, that's dealing with family. Uh, we have the full moon squaring Saturn in your first house. So that's all about how people see you. So people could see you in a way where you may be um, restricting um, your activities. People may not see you. You know, you may decide not to deal with people. You may decide you just want to be on your own for a little bit. And it's like, what? Aquarius don't want to talk to anybody? <laughs> you know, so people may have, um, you know, you may be feeling that way. You may have some hidden feelings, agenda, uh, hidden feelings or ulterior motives about people um, and how they perceive you and how they see you. You know, it's like, why do they always um, talk about my hat or talk about my hair every time I come around or something like that? And you might get frustrated with that. Something simple like that. Um, but you don't want to turn it into something big. All right. Um, what else can I tell you about this particular placement with Saturn in your first house? Yeah, you um, you just want to be careful not to beat yourself up in reference to any emotions that you might have about um past relationships or anybody that you may have lost, you know, who may have passed away, because those things could be coming up as well for you. Um, and then we also have your full moon trining Mars, but that's in your sixth house. So that's good. The sixth house deals with your work ethic, your discipline, deals with your pets. Okay, so you may in a work environment have courage to do some things um, to express yourself in a way that you may not have before. Um, you may have the emotional strength that you need or the initiative that you need to take advantage of opportunities in the workplace or to implement more disciplinary action. Maybe some of you want to um, work out. So you can use that energy, that Mars energy will help you. Maybe you want to slim down and you want to cut back on what you're eating. Um, that energy can help you over the next two weeks. And then finally, but last but not least, my Pisces, uh, the full moon in Scorpio is going to be in your ninth house. That's the that's the house of wisdom, turning pain into wisdom. It's uh, higher education, masters and PhDs. It's also about uh, the um, 
It's also about foreign travel. OK, so maybe you have hidden feelings and emotions about that or somebody could have hidden feelings and emotions about you in relation to those areas. OK, the full moon in Scorpio opposes Uranus in your third house. Mercury and Venus are there as well. So with the third house that deals with your environment and your surroundings. So there could be some unexpected changes. Be careful of traffic accidents. Um, be careful of um, people being nasty at the uh, grocery store or, you know, um, Maybe you discover that you have some hidden feelings and emotions about where you live, um, the environment that you live in. Maybe some people that visit you may have hidden feelings and emotions about where you live or how you live, um, the area and how to get to you, you know, the travel. Be careful about that. Um, you have the full moon in Scorpio squaring Saturn. That's in your 12th house. That's where, um, is that your 12th house? Yeah, that's your 12th house. So your 12th house is where things come to reside, where things come to transform or change. All right. So there may be um, difficulty um, ending uh, things that no longer serve you, ending old routines, uh, changing up things that you want to change up, like evolving, especially when it comes to wrapping up cycles. Um, you may have some difficulty doing that or you may be feeling a certain way about it and make, make you feel depressed. You might feel agitated, aggravated. Um, you may feel sadness about it or guilt about it. But use that full moon and Scorpio energy trining Mars um, from your fifth house to gain um, the courage and the initiative that you need and the emotional strength. And you can do that by doing things to have fun. OK, find something that you enjoy doing, something that, um, you know, maybe do some type of leisure activity and that might help you to cope with these energies. But guys, that's what I got for you. These energies are going to last about two weeks. OK, up until we get the, the new moon uh, in Taurus on um, May 11th. So just be careful about people coming around you. Pay attention to your intuition. It's going to be in heightened during this time. All right. Watch people that you uh, no longer associate with. Watch them coming back because a lot of times they'll have ulterior motives. Just watch people around you, period, and listen to your instincts. I wish you guys the best and I'll talk to you later.